is Nisha Rawal and welcome to a new episode on the Motherhood Chronicles. A chronicle is a series of events and what could be more eventful than motherhood? Since I became a mom, a new world opened up its doors for me. On the other side of the door was just pure love flowing through real people who were struggling to find answers just like me. New moms for breastfeeding, for weaning their children, losing post-pregnancy weight and what not. That's how the Motherhood Chronicles was born. On this splendid journey of motherhood, I have been fortunate enough to have found some amazing people on the way. Here we will bust myths, discuss facts and together build a stigma-free world one episode at a time. In this episode, we shall talk about mindful parenting. Let me introduce you to my two lovely panelists. Sheetal Sangvi is a child, teenage parent counsellor and an art-based practitioner. She holds a rich experience of 12 years into this field and has worked with eminent educational institutions and child care centres. She is a founder of Sangvi Child Care Centre, located in Mumbai, where she does individual and group sessions. Through her website, sangvichildcarecentre.com, she shares her thoughts pertaining to parenting and more. Currently, Sheetal is on a mission to create an awareness on mindful parenting. Welcome, Sheetal. Thank you so much, Nisha. Well, uh, I met you at one of such um, really interesting uh, mindful parenting sessions where you were talking about your mission on right. how to make parenting easy in this mm -hmm. fast-paced life. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much for agreeing to share your experience through TMC with this world. It's my pleasure and I'm so glad that you invited me. Our second panelist, Meghna Dixit. She is unapologetically sassy, and refreshingly authentic. She is Bollywood obsessed, fashion loving and a family woman who believes in capturing small moments from life and presenting them through a super artistic, sensitive and informative blog. She has recently won the People's Choice Award for Best Mum Advisor in UAE for 2019. She is also the HR and Corporate Strategy Head of a law firm. Her beautiful blog is called Love Life and the Little One on Instagram and her website. So welcome Meghna for coming on board this panel. I am <laughs> I am so thrilled that we could plan something in such short notice because you know you were flying down to India and I thought that I must make use of this opportunity. I just I mean I, it was supposed to be it was meant to be. We both connected because of motherhood. Uh, across the domain, like Instagram connected us, a mum from India meeting a mum from India based in Dubai. And uh, I'm so glad that I planned my travel at this time and I could be on this couch with you talking about our favorite topic other than fashion and makeup, motherhood. <laughs> so with that, I roll out my first question for today. Rishital. What is the importance of mindful parenting and if you can just simply describe what it is all about? So uh, when we talk about mindful parenting, it starts from conception, pregnancy and of course when we become parent by in itself. The idea of mindful parenting is that, that we be in touch with the current state of emotions rather than getting carried away by those emotions. We don't get influenced by the environment and a lot of talks which are going on. So we go uh, and we live in the moment rather than thinking a lot about the future. Right. We enjoy that phase of life, right. whether it's pregnancy, whether it's infancy, like you just mentioned, whether it's toddlerhood, whether it's teenage. So that is why I feel mindful parenting is really important right. so that we get connected to the actual phase of the life, whether it's our emotions. And once we understand our emotions, then it is really easy to understand the emotions of the child because uh, a child also undergoes a lot of emotions. But if you don't understand your own emotions, you are not connected to what is happening in that particular moment. How will you transpire that into your child? So that is why I feel mindful parenting is really important to understand your own state of mind and to live with that state of mind. Absolutely. I mean, I, when I attended that workshop, which mm. was held at Kavish's Play School, right. I had that instant connect. Right. But when an expert just comes in front of you or even yeah. when a child just, you know, casually yeah. says something and suddenly you, you yeah. have a term yeah. and it, it has just been simplified for you then. Right. So I think that helped me a lot because it was the first time I yeah. actually heard something like mindful parenting. Yeah. Although I was already consciously practicing mm. it, Correct. but I didn't really have a 
a word for it and right. as soon as you gave me the word yeah. and you defined it and the the way you conducted your workshop yeah. i had an instant connect and i could completely relate to it yeah. can you give us a quick example for people who mm. are probably still in that question mark zone of mm. mindful parenting so there are times when i know i am with my cell phone me and my daughter are playing along i am expecting a kind of an email to pop up so my phone is just next to me and uh, over here my daughter tells me that you know mama please keep the phone aside and play with me i have to select between the two either i give her some activity which she can manage on her own for next 15 minutes right. and i tell her that mama is busy with something or i just switch off my net and be with my daughter for another 15 minutes telling her come on let's complete this game and i enjoy with my daughter rather than keeping my brain all my thoughts at both the places uh, on that email also which is about to come and at the same time pretending to be with my daughter so when i talk about mindfulness it means that mindful parenting is you are being in that moment with your child rather than just pretending clicking a photograph also or it can be simply playing on the beach with the sand as well so we are in that moment rather than thinking about two different things or what is going to pop up in the next 15 minutes or right. so and not attending anything in completion you practiced attachment parenting which was again a term that i heard from you <laughs> while we were having this conversation last yeah. evening yeah. and uh, then again you know motherhood is so beautiful and every single hour that i spend with another co mom I always learn something. Yeah. Yes. Did it create a mindful bonding between you and your daughter? Before I even get into attachment parenting, there should be a disclaimer. When we talk about mindful parenting or attachment parenting, it's not for yogis. I mean all of us mm. normal people like look at me mm. from nowhere do I look like, you know, only whatever somewhere too zen, too calm, too whatever. Mm. it's it's a practice it's a choice more than a practice mm -hmm. um and when i said that i want i followed attachment parenting i as an ego we me and my husband we decided to follow attachment parenting because you cannot do it in isolation mm -hmm. like i can be a mom i'm very mindful and i'm giving all my attention to my child mm -hmm. cut to the the child goes and the daddy is like too busy with yeah. his work and whatever and you have to understand that unless you're a single parent taking care of the child by yourself it is a unit so uh, i would not take the entire credit as a mom that i followed attachment parenting and that happened of course i breastfed my husband could not mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes i did that part but then it is a unit units work into it now coming to attachment parenting when we got pregnant um um it was a very conscious decision i mean i uh, i got pregnant when uh, we decided that yes we've had we have put invested a lot in our relationship we were in a very happy place in our relationship um and then we were financially all right we were like mentally at a good space and so it started from there like she very rightly yeah. said mm. so we decided to like mm. bring the child in our life mm. so it wasn't i'm not saying that if the child happens and it's wrong no mm. but in our case particularly it started from there so there was an attachment to the idea of bringing mm. the child into mm. the family mm. luckily for us we didn't have to struggle so much mm. and it happened it was like okay god saying tathastu we were pregnant when i was in muscat i am an mba and i have like taken care of a lot of things uh in the sense mergers and amalgamation sat in the board meeting what not my husband's from finance we were so called um young couple with great iq and good stuff to talk about but when we mm. got pregnant without mm. the family around us mm. we were so confused we had mm. no idea what to do i mean everything every hiccup was like now what um and that is when i started researching about mm. what are the different things so i read all those books what to expect blah blah whatever but um when i went back and i realized attachment parenting is a great jargon mm. but if you just go back to our parents mm. or my grandmother how she raised mm. attachment yeah, parenting absolutely. is mm. so desi mm. <laughs> like all of us have co slept right. yeah breastfeeding was the way mm. you know what mm. else it is asking for so attachment parenting is nothing fancy but it is basically making sure that your infant or your baby mm. Mm. is secure mm. is loved and is fed the mm. best that you can mm. uh, and that is what i followed mm. but i had the luxury of following it because i didn't have to go back to work i mm. consciously took a break in my career mm. um i didn't even hire a nanny 
we could but I decided to do it so it was my husband's job to do the nappy and the diaper and had as much one on one time with the baby the body touch time so we were always wearing so at home I was wearing the baby and when we went out my husband was wearing the baby my daughter by the time she turned 22 months she had sat in 24 flights like mm -hmm. we traveled across mm -hmm. Europe US mm -hmm. all of that Wow. during attachment parenting it was just mm. so easy because she was always with us happy child mm. feeding from the source and luckily it was very beautiful talking about mindfulness mm. it didn't not it didn't just made me a good mom i don't know mm. what that good mom is mm. it did it did make me a nicer person right. i realized that with her i was a better person mm. than i was ever in front of my colleagues and now that i've gone back to work and all mm. i see that change in myself right. I mean, the people who had worked with me before would suddenly think, where was this kindness format yeah. Meghna now? Mm. But it made me a better person, a better yeah. friend, a better wife. Mm. Now that you talk about attachment parenting, mm. I think I've pretty much followed it. Mm. Since I got to know about this term last night from you, yeah. I googled it and right. then I read that after World War II, a mm. pediatrician had coined this concept of attachment parenting. You know, where mothers should stay as close to the child as possible for security, emotional or physical or any kind of security. So even though we've had nannies, because I get this a lot on Instagram, people are like, oh, you're going to the spa, you're doing this and that, and you're because you guys are celebrities and you have two nannies wherever you go. So I'm like, okay, maybe I'll look for a platform and then talk about it. So I just want to let people know that it's not like we have a you know, tale of nannies behind us. Yes, we do have staff and we have the same issues like anybody goes through, ki, oh, we don't have staff, we are short on staff. This happens to everybody. Everyone. Every woman is talking about yeah. getting that right person in their right. life who could whatever yeah, be their savior. Yeah, the right yeah. So I even opened up a new venture, Roots and Wings, which you know about, that's how we got connected mm -hmm. as well. And uh, that time, Kavish was only three months old. But we were practicing hands-on, even though we had a lot of nannies coming in and going out, right? From the Jhapa, Wala, maids to everyone. But none of them were really like so good. And even though they would give the baby a shower, like they would be ready, we were still very conscious about everything. So we still change Kavish's diapers right. and we still do everything, give him a bath. That is something that we've chosen to do. I think I was just obsessed with what if what if you know yeah, yeah. somebody is just probably doing something that's not yeah, right yeah, yeah. and I didn't want to live in that what if zone yeah, so it was very difficult to balance opening a new venture yeah. breastfeeding the child being a hands-on parent so I want to really it's a unit it's yeah. a unit, yeah. it's a unit. Yeah. and now I have my mom so yeah. I've literally kidnapped her since January 2019 yeah. okay. and that's how the transformation took place too yeah. so I can't believe we've spoken on one question for so long Why do you feel that parents of this era need mm. to know about mindful parenting more than ever? In past three to four years, it's become a world of technology, okay, one. Second, uh, it's a highly competitive world and stress is seen very clearly amongst parents also and children also because everyone uh, feels that, you know, okay, I have to be best, fine. So, uh, like you rightly said in the beginning of the episode that when we talk about child development, there are a lot of areas which are taken care of, physical and language and social and emotional. Emotional development is taking a backseat uh, in amongst all the other development. For example, if a mother of a teenager comes and tells that uh, my child is not able to concentrate, and when you happen to ask the mother that uh, which standard is your child studying in and she happens to say 9 standard yes. and when you interact with the child you come to know that it's not about the concentration it's not about the cognition but it's about the emotions of the child mm -hmm. so that is why i feel that this era where we are living in so much of stress and uh, we need a break we need to understand ourselves our thoughts Today morning also when we had to reach her at 3 o'clock, okay, yeah. I had to travel all the way from Daisar. So this simple thing of traveling also creates so much stress. Yes. You okay. calculate and you... You calculate, like things are not like ease how it used yeah. to be in our teenage life. We just had to leave house. Now this era we have to plan everything and that is why we have to be connected to our thoughts more than everything. That is why I feel mindful parenting is a concept which can directly connect you with your thoughts and your child's thought process and you will know how to react instead of overreacting. So uh, Meghna, I want to ask you, 
लास्ट इवनिंग वेन वी हैविंग दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन यू सेट उड़ने से पहले जमीन से जुड़ना जरूरी है इट वॉज सो प्यूटिफुल एंड आई टोल्ड यू दैट रूट्स एंड विंग्स हैड द सेम फिलोसफी इन माइंड एंड वी वर जस्ट सेम पिंचिंग ईच अदर यू आर रेजिंग एन इंडियन चाइल्ड इन अ ग्लोबल एटमोसफियर एज एन एक्सपैट सो हाउ टफ और ईजी इज इट और सो Yes, of course. Um, we are Indian. We are very Indian family, mm-hmm. and uh, we live in the Middle East. But the good thing is that we live in the Middle East, so there are lot of Indians living there. It's just that uh, the area, like within Middle East, within Dubai, where we live, is mostly where most of the expats are, and not very many Indians okay. are. So, like old Dubai has lot of Indians, so you it, you actually feel like you're back in India and all of that. Mm-hmm. But where we live, um, in there are not so many Indians, mm-hmm. and um, and so there are all kind of nationalities living there. Again, it was our choice to put our daughter in a British curriculum. It's a very mm-hmm. British school. Mm-hmm. Now the sweet part of this is mm-hmm. that my da- daughter really doesn't have a filter of color, of caste, or of creed mm-hmm. or nationality at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. Um, her classroom, there are twenty kids, and there are eighteen nationalities. so it's like a mini united nations mm-hmm. they eat together they sit together we are friends the mums mm-hmm. are friends mm-hmm. and they we celebrate everything mm-hmm. so my daughter was super hum logon ne literally halloween wo khatam kara mm-hmm. and my mom was like ye kya cobweb laga rakhe hain because the dubai was mm-hmm. like sorry diwali was right next <laughs> so it's like this oh, is the time you kind of clean <laughs> yeah it's time to clean the cobwebs uh-huh. but i had put those you know because uh-huh. it's her halloween yeah. um and then we had to put up the diwali decoration right. because it's that so you replace the skeletons so with the lakshmi yeah. <laughs> <laughs> correct correct to so, uh, hathi bhar aage aur wo billi uh-huh. andar chali gayi uh-huh. it was literally that but uh-huh. then what we do is that I mean I would not exchange it for anything. Okay. Those times are gone. Like I would also not tell myself to be so regressive ki you are there mm-hmm. and you would only want to be somewhere mm-hmm. culturally senior you think that mm-hmm. my child should only be like bilkul Indian yeah. and desi and would not right. have would not that's not right. Correct. I have lucky that my child mm-hmm. is getting an opportunity to be a global citizen. Right. and why would we not i mean mm. think about all the things like yeah. politics and all of that mm. things that make us cringe no matter how mindful you get mm. no matter how amazing attachment parenting you do if later at some mm. point there mm. is some biasness or some mm. my daughter doesn't get admission because of some kind of racism mm. and all of that or within within our country or yeah. outside i'm saying yeah. you know there are bigger forces at play yeah. we live in a cocoon in a bu- in a bubble right. but when my child is getting you know is ra- i'm raising her there mm. i feel this this calm this peace that at that point mm. she is she feels one of the world right like she's there is nothing there's no difference like her best friend who she wants to marry yeah. is half french half italian <laughs> So this is this is how it is right now. My friends who came for my Diwali mm-hmm. party uh, were not Indians at all. Right now, I have to take salwar kameez and bindis mm-hmm. and all of that for them. So they take pride in being yeah. Indian because they see that we are very culturally, yeah. uh, we have the spiritual side to us. Yeah. And at the same time, because it's important to have the roots to mm-hmm. fly, mm-hmm. I recently enrolled her in uh, Gita classes. Oh, wow. So she's and again Bhagavad Gita was something I read during my pregnancy mm-hmm. and I think it is an amazing text anybody mm-hmm. should read not for the religion but for the intelligence mm-hmm. that it brings in mm-hmm. um and uh, and now she's learning those shlokas and mm-hmm. she shows it off and she's loving it like right. in her school uh, elocution she basically talked yeah. about it so which is which is really really interesting um when Diwali happened I actually did this you know we give gifts in the class so I made this little clay diyas that we mm-hmm. buy and with the paint and with an instruction right. to for all the other kids you know yeah. the 20 kids and it was a most beautiful moment mm. when next day on our school whatsapp group all these other moms of different mm. nationality they had lit up that diya because i'd given the instruction in their house and that is when you feel that you know you're doing something right mm. so i love that my daughter raising an indian kid there of course yeah. there are moments of thing the one one of our video actually went viral when they said where are you from and she said i'm from india dubai ah. <laughs> Do oh, she was born there she really doesn't know but um, she really thinks she doesn't understand uh, that these are different countries yeah. she really thinks that the world is her oyster yeah. and that's right. that's beautiful. but again this is uh, a mindful choice that you've made yeah. exactly. this is mindful yeah. parenting so for you mindful parenting might be this some but some other parent might say no as a mindful parent i want to put uh, keep her grounded only to the indian roots but yeah. anything that you do as a parent it mm. might be a different decision or it might be different because every individual is different every child is a different individual yeah. every mother is a different individual and so yeah. is every father see the thing is the moment you say mindful parenting you have to stop thinking that you're making decisions for your child you have to on a day to day basis mm. but you cannot work from that space mm. mindful parenting is what 
that you treat them as young adults exactly. it's a respectful parenting yeah. it's nothing else yeah. so i cannot say that i know better mm. so you should only do this i am a hindu right now but if tomorrow my daughter wants to read whatever and become True. whatever whether it is sexually or in religion i have to accept that True. and i think in today's time it yeah. is easier because mm -hmm. see there are three moms sitting here yeah. and we all are connected because we feel this yeah, not because sure. we were taught this yeah. in school right. it's still not a subject mindfulness right. is not still a subject yeah, in a lot of schools i think spiritually or mm -hmm. at a higher mm -hmm. level mm -hmm. we are all looking at it so there is surge in technology mm -hmm. but there's also a surge in human mm -hmm. emotions in humanity in mm -hmm. spirituality mm -hmm. in overall intelligence mm -hmm. or eq mm -hmm. uh, which i don't think at the time of our parents it was mm -hmm. it was mostly like rank yeah. first mm -hmm. engineer doctor mm -hmm. now people will very happily say oh my daughter is a yogi or my son is a travel That's documentary true. filmmaker Parents greatly affect their children's behavior. Hmm. Children incorporate majority of the things from their parents on a daily basis. How crucial is it for parents to set the right examples for their children? There is an age-old debate that child development is a combination of nature and nurture, which I really believe in. Some part of the child development is genetic, which we can't control. and there is other part which is environment so to set right kind of examples is very important something like active listening so if a child is coming to you in an exciting way and sharing something with you and if you just kind of pretend to listen uh, and you say yes uh, yeah yeah you are right or whatever then when we want to pass on some information to our child the child will actually behave in the same way after four or five years if the mother comes uh, and you know complains that you know the child is not listening to me but why will that child listen because that child has not seen you same way even the home environment like the communication within the parents so the child is observing how you and your husband are talking to each other and they pick up the same thing it's not a lesson that we are giving them sure. it is just something which we are inculcating in our day to day life yeah. the kind of respect that we are giving yeah. to uh, each, other. each other the same thing that child is imbibing somewhere into the system uh, day to day living how we are living the words we are using the actions that we are doing how we are reacting to certain situations so mindful parenting just wouldn't uh, mean like a direct communication with your child but it's mm. also developing that mindfulness in everything not just parenting exactly. you have to inculcate that in your daily uh, life yeah, in yeah. everything in your conversation yeah. with your partner yeah. or having kindness with your staff or anything Correct. of yeah. that sort because yeah. that's when you're really being yeah. mindful about it yeah. so you're just not putting up an act like you gave a small yeah. example of it yeah. a bigger example would be uh, mm. to shed off that pretense in every area of our life yeah. and to actually teach the child through yeah. example yeah. as well yeah. super be to yeah. be a better kid yourself just yeah. like the humans we want around yeah. us right to be kind to be yeah. compassionate yeah. to be warm loving mm. these are i think the main qualities that we all want in any human being yeah. Let's uh, talk about toxic parenting a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, toxic parenting includes relationship with toxic parents who do not treat their children as individuals that mm -hmm. you all just spoke about. Mm -hmm. They won't compromise. They won't take responsibility. They won't mm -hmm. give up. They won't accept mm -hmm. for their behavior, or they won't even apologize to their children. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, yeah. example, teaching by example. It comes from the word toxic. So, if you are a toxic human being, or you're going through a space of toxicity. bitter divorce um bad problems at job mm. and whatever you know i'm not saying that a person is toxic at all the time mm. sometimes they go through a phase and yeah. all of that and if they do not have or they are not equipped mm. to handle those emotions themselves mm. of course that toxicity is going to go and will be and soaked in mm. by the child because they are what they are mirrors they like yeah. mirroring you yeah. um so if you are a toxic um, if you are going through a toxic phase your marriage will be toxic mm. and your and of course your parenting yeah. would be toxic yeah. uh luckily i don't have much experience in it yet yeah. <laughs> and i hope not i hope not but uh, yes i have seen it around um and um and it's just said uh, at least in the country that i'm living there are mm. very very strict laws about yeah. it i'm I, i hope it is here in india because to the extent mm. that it is very much written in the school book in the mm. in the thing that we've said that if the child looks sad for more than whatever days mm. or if supposing my husband goes for a trip mm. right mm. i'm supposed to write in the diary and 
like inform the teacher that she may feel a bit upset because she might miss her daddy emotional question. emotional thing yeah. yeah but if it continues for longer or if they realize that she's not coming clean or there is something in her or a very happy child has suddenly become very so distinct, a child's mental health is mental health is, is very very important yeah. just because there are very strict laws about towards child negligence mm. towards toxicity uh, yeah. uh, and the thing and there are special counselors in schools right. who measure it there is actually a peaceful room in my daughter's yeah. class and a meditation room yeah. to make sure that they feel at peace right. uh, or grief for example mm. they lost their grandparent or they lost mm. their pet mm. you know it can be very very right. thing so toxic is not just a person to the child but the environment again yeah. um, and and hence that's my take on it and of mm. course uh, you need mindfulness you need maturity and sometimes you need expert help yeah. and one should again not shy away from it yeah. to make sure that you heal yourself first and so your child yeah. can benefit from it i always say that mental health is as important as physical yeah. health and it more. should be treated more, more. Yeah. yes yeah. and uh, this is a really amazing thing that uh, you spoke about the school having this as a part of their responsibility because if this show is making any difference then this is a message i would like to send out to schools as well well uh, that's where i met uh, sheetal you know at yeah. a mindful parenting uh, session at kavish's play school and just like megna just now said that there is a separate uh, expert in uh, her school her daughter's yeah. school that yeah. measures these things it would be amazing to have mentally healthy children around us because yeah. children are like mirrors like she said they pick up everything you know they are like right. highly sensitive exactly. and so they may have mental we, we yeah. can have a good house but Absolutely. then they are 6 hours Correct. in the school Correct right. and no. then they might even pick up the toxicity from mm. other children teachers uh, yeah. teachers yeah. you know teachers yeah. who are carrying that emotional baggage yeah. so yeah. therefore a mental health counselor it's is so really important. important to be present right from teachers Correct. to the people working there True. to schools and you know anyone to in children. child care anyone absolutely child. and this show is about creating an awareness i mean the topic yeah. is so huge we can keep yeah. talking about it we can you know uh, sheetal can start uh, telling you about how to take care of it or how to avoid these situations but that's mm. why you need an expert to be physically mm. present in your life yeah. so if you feel that you know there is toxicity around your child whether it's coming through you or the environment yeah. or you have any kind of question mark zone that's happening mm. in your child's life please consider Counselor. meeting an expert yeah. a child counselor would Again, be the this best it's part of my full parenting it's a part of my yeah. parenting wherein we are consciously uh, taking the child to an expert So Kavish's occupational therapist told me about the importance of messy play. Hmm. Uh, तब तक ये जो I would read on these little dabbas, three plus, hmm. and I would say नहीं अभी तो Kavish डेढ़ साल का ही है या दो साल का ही है. So let me not expose him to the slime game or to the sand game and all of those. But she told me it's really important. So if you're with the child and you're careful about it, hmm. then it's okay. In fact, hmm. indulge the child in these kind of activities. You know, hmm. they help you develop immunity. They help you with your skills. you know so i want to know that do you believe in art based therapy um so personally for me because again i was following this attachment thing when um, my daughter anika was 6 months old uh, we went for a mommy and baby sensory play area so there was a sensory play area and what it was is um, that there were some place wahan pe aata tha kahin pe sand tha and there was all this gooey thing and she was supposed to go um my daughter personally didn't enjoy it so much mm. and she still date she's like that she doesn't like messy play mm. and that's her nature mm. and i was like i was full whatever into it and enjoying it and trying to push it because why because the book says it's the best thing to do mm. so yes sensory play it is but she like her father doesn't like to get messy and mm. dirty and that's not her thing mm. so then then i went and because i had paid for the whole four days mm. being desi i had to <laughs> go to all four <laughs> classes <laughs> of the sensory yeah. play and i enjoyed a lot mm. and my daughter would look i mean if you could ever see a 6 month old judging you it was like this mm. and so clearly that art therapy was not working for her but what we loved what she loved more the most was music we were also going for this mommy and me music thing we even went for this yoga so again like i had a lot of time and touch for resources with me and there were these opportunities there were these classes um in the uae and there a lot of those so that i could do this one on one bonding time and they are all part of this mindfulness parenting if you say uh whether it is art or music and whatever your child would love to do so the whole idea for me is art is a great therapy but again you cannot make decision for your child you can give them that avenue and then like you know follow their cues 
motherhood is a big bag of so many emotions yeah. right love laughter tears sacrifices so here at the tmc studio we try to create a small vibe of this big emotion yeah. so we're going to play some games now are you girls ready yeah. <laughs> bring it on so the first game we're going to play today is guess the toy characters what you have to do is you have to keep your eyes closed a toy character will appear in front of you which will not really appear up here i'm going to bring it <laughs> you keep your eyes shut you keep your eyes shut and you feel it and then you say which character it is okay okay so whoever guesses the maximum rights is the winner Winnie the Pooh character. It's it's like the color of Winnie the Pooh, and it's the color of the elephant. My God, you girls are really connected. Go on. Jumbo. No, it's not. It's some animal with a tail. Of course. It's a donkey, you know. It's a donkey. No. Yeah, मुझे लगा तुम लोग Hulk और Iron Man दोगे. I don't know. Because your daughter likes all these characters. I really don't know this. Pluto. Oh God. Okay, now close your eyes again. Now the next character. My eyes are closed. Okay. I'm not gonna throw it this time. Where's the helmet? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Again, another soft toy. Okay. You can do it. Okay, this feels like a. This is a cloth. So. अच्छा ये Tom है. अभी तो Tom था. It can't be. Tommy is Jerry. 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 Okay. Jerry. मैं बचपन से उसमें confused होती हूँ. Is it a pig? Peppa Pig. Yeah. Peppa? Oh, oh, it's a pig. It's called guess the animal sounds. Okay. All right, are you ready? Yes. yes. Okay. Mo oh, cow. Run. Uh, it's a pig. Hen. <laughs> okay. Bakri. Goat. सेम थिंग नो बकरी शीप शीप सेम ना बकरी फैमिली नो अगर बकरी का थोड़ा गला खराब हो तो इट्स लाइक दैट ओनली दिस इज अकडल मिस्टर हैन कॉक या रूस्टर इट्स लाइक लाइक अ कॉन्स्टिपेटेड मच्छर टाइप Is that how constipated muchers sound in Dubai? <laughs> That's an owl. Okay. Hooting, okay. yeah. Okay, so one more. Just because I'm having fun. <laughs> oh my. Uh, Twitter. Yeah. No, it's a bird. Cricket. 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 Okay. okay. Before we say goodbye, would you like to share a handy tip or any mantra on parenting or any message that you would like to give out? I just want to say, ex- share an experience. So my daughter is now five years old. and uh, we parents we we choose the path that we choose some consciously some we just go up on it aur kaise pata chalta hai ki what you're doing is right or no because there's no report card nobody is telling you unless you think that marks or academics is a report card in our case we don't so how do we know what we're doing is right so recently my daughter after this uh, gully boy was released and i saw showed her that song kaisi ye majboori hai kaisi ye dooree hai that song and she w- watched it and her face expressions changed like mama what are those kids doing outside now this is understand this is a dubai kid she's not seen homeless homelessness or homeless mm-hmm. kids and i said that you know there are some kids who don't have mummy and daddies and then they live by themselves like where do they live i said they sometimes live on the road or sometimes they live outside then she's like really and i said yes she's like can when we go to india next can we bring some because i have some room in my room oh. and when she said that uh-huh. i mean i literally i didn't know what to say because i swear to god i think we are we think that you know by giving them some biscuit or something mm-hmm. that we are doing great none of us ever think to bring them home or to let them live and this is a single child only child saying who doesn't who has not shared anything as such mm-hmm. i thought this is it like if she turns out if she doesn't do anything in her life mm-hmm. or if she doesn't even get a career or do whatever but if she continues to think this or yeah. feel this and stay happy and healthy like the way it is it's all worth it so a big hug to anika from my side for being so awesome <laughs> yeah. and a big bear hug to you both for raising such an awesome kid already so now let's hear it from you shita so um 
to conclude mindful parenting is not to become a perfect parent we all learn by trial and error let's be conscious in certain things no meals and tv goes hand in hand okay because uh, again going back to my days i don't remember my mom switching on tv my granny switching on tv and feeding me i'm sure none of us uh, have seen television and we have eaten at least in our toddlerhood okay so it's this is from where you can start whoever is watching when you are eating without watching tv you are making use of all the five senses because you are touching the food you are eating it so you are feeling the taste of the food whichever senses you talk about eating is the activity which we all do we all eat food so that is why i feel that eating should go without screen time and my daughter doesn't know there is no association basically between tv or mobile and uh, food That's, that's like very well done, I must say, because that's pretty not as easy as yeah, it sounds. Yeah. Because there are times when we where we give in, and you know, okay, yeah. when we are in nuclear families, we can probably have like a one kind of a pattern. Yeah. But if we are living with some elderly person mm-hmm. or somebody else, then you mm-hmm. really can't control yeah, a lot many that. times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, if we can practice that, nothing yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, we have actually come to the end of the episode, and I want to thank you both, and I want to congratulate you for going through pregnancy, motherhood. and creating such a fine balance between your careers and whatever it is that you've yeah. been wanting to do in life so thank you so much for coming here thank you so much for setting a stage yeah. like this where moms can talk freely yeah. and not just on a on a surface layer level but just right. dive down inside and um you are touching lives by this and i'm so glad to be part of this thank you thank you really and i'm happy that i'm meeting so many like minded mothers on this platform as a token of love we're going to share The Motherhood Chronicles gratitude trunk with you all. What we have concluded through this episode is let's pay attention. It's hard to slow down and notice things in a busy world. Let's live in the moment. Let's try to intentionally give attention to everything we do. Let's accept ourselves. Let's treat ourselves the way we would treat a good friend. Let's focus on our breathing. There is no hard and fast rule what will work with our child's unique personality in our homes or in our family. But let's focus and give attention and not to forget be mindful. I'll see you again on the Motherhood Chronicles with a brand new episode, a new panel and a new topic. Until then, this is Nisha Rawal signing off. Happy Motherhood Chronicles to you. Bye.